Check out the all-new WinBet Sports Bar located at FedEx Forum, just off Bill Street Alley. Open every event night plus non-event Saturday and Sunday starting at 11 a.m. The WinBet Sports Bar is your lock for the best local brews, food, and all the games. Sports fans looking for action and a little extra juice can receive exclusive in-bar-only promotion, including odds, boosts, free bets, and more from the WinBet Sportsbook app. Plus, watch all the games. College and Pro with over 30 TVs and Sunday NFL tickets. Parking is free for guests and available in the Gossett Motors Garage. For more information, go to FedEx Form.com. Grizz fans, the official Grizzlies mobile app is your key to the game. It's an all-in-one experience updated with even more functionality. You can keep track of a team with news, social media, the schedule, stats, and the standings. And you can log into Grind City Media to watch and listen live to streaming content like the Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can check out Grind City Media articles, videos, podcasts, and GCM talent. See what's going on right here at FedEx Forum with our concert and event calendar. Plus, you can find detailed information on seating and concessions with Arena Maps. You can take the app into FedEx Forum as your mobile wallet, use it as your ticket to the game for Grizz Den mobile pickup, and as contact-free payment for Arena concessions the official Grizzlies mobile app, your key to the game. Three vocal powerhouses. One epic night. It's Maxwell's night tour. With Anthony Hamilton. Come on. Come on. And Joe. And tell me what I gotta do to the night tour starring Maxwell. Featuring Anthony Hamilton and Joe. Visit bpctickets.com. Brought to you by the Black Promoters Collective. The Who Kids Back. We don't get fooled again. Memphis, it's your turn. Pete Townsend, Roger Daltrey, The Who with an orchestra. Why don't you FedEx Forum, Friday, May 13th. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. The Who, live in concert. There's more at TheWho.com. My comp for Ja is Allen Iverson with Pure Point Guard Instincts. Yeah. He is, I mean, look, he's busted on the scene, as you've noticed, we've noticed recently. He's gone from one of the rising stars in the league to a bona fide, no questions asked superstar. Yes. He, he's made that leap this yes. year. You know, we all knew he was en route. He's arrived and still ascended. The Chris Vernon Show, live weekdays at noon on GrindCityMedia.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan, live on GrindCityMedia.com. Now, here's your hosts, Jessica Benson and Megan Triplett. A happy Tuesday. Welcome into Rise and Grind. Megan Triplett, Jessica Benson, CJ Hurt here with you to tip off your Tuesday edition of the show. We got a lot to get to because it is a Grizzlies game day and a lot happened last night um, in the sports world and we have a lot coming on today. We do, it is a busy day. Grizzlies Pelicans tonight at FedEx Forum. So let's just bring in Brevin Knight right off the bat. We are home. There's a nationally televised game tonight, but everyone can watch it on Valley Sports Southeast this time around, which is how we like to watch it. Brevin, how's it going since we last saw you? Uh, it's, it's, it's going good, but they can't watch us tonight. What, really? No, again? No, is it again. Yeah, this is it. TNT, this is uh, uh, not until we have, I think, until we get up to six or seven TNT games. Six. Wow. CJ says six TNT games. Mm. The seventh TNT game is what I'm guessing is when we will be able to work side mm -hmm. by side. But until that point, 
We're just spectators tonight, Ooh. which is fine with me. I'm I was all right. trying to take well, it I mean, into existence. I, I take that back. Man. It's not all right, but so what does it. what does a spectator Brevin night look like, especially for a home game? Well, first, we we'll, you know, got to see if we go to the game. That's okay. first and okay. foremost. <laughs> um, see if, if we don't have a some type come up with some type of golf trip in the interim mm -hmm. until that time. <laughs> but uh, if, if I'm here in town, then then I would I, I would probably go by the game at least for a little while mm -hmm. uh, and, and sit and watch it. Or I would just enjoy sitting at home and, and watching it from at home. Because the, the good thing is that we already get the good seat here. It's not like we're sitting up top yeah. anymore. So it's like uh, we got the opportunity to be down and see the games. And so um, I take these times as just really like a, a, a mini vacation mm -hmm. for me. But I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to watch the game in some way, yeah. shape or form, whether it be in person or at home is just a decision. Well, that sounds fun. I know. It, it's just different. Like, it's an 82-game season, so at least it kind of, like, mixes things up a bit. I know you'd rather be working. Yeah, no, but. it was good. So the last one, we watched it. I was on the road driving back. We watched a little bit in the car and then stopped by the watch party over at Slider Inn for a minute and then went on home and finished watching that one, being that it was a road game. But, yeah, it gives you a, it gives you a different perspective. It's... it's um, Sitting, if I go to the game, the only thing is we go to the game, so you got to ask, answer a lot of questions mm -hmm. while the game is going on. If I was to sit in my regular seats. Okay. And so um, that becomes a, which is yeah. it's cool. Like I like to go and see everybody and talk to everybody, but then eventually while the game is going on, I want to watch mm -hmm. the game and I already know it's going to be like, well, what, we, what should we have done then? It's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, you're too, I'm, you're, I'm, you're I'm too famous for the night. <laughs> you're too famous. No, the team is too good. It's not <laughs> me, it's the, the team. Trail. The team has, 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 uh, Given myself, Pete, Fish, uh, a, some newfound fame. Mm -hmm. Well, we will see if this team can adjust, come back, learn some lessons from over the weekend. You saw them take care of business in a professional win over the worst team in the East and then not have quite the same effect against the Rockets on Sunday night. It was a bummer of a game to watch, but it is certainly one where going down the stretch of games where you are facing some of these teams who might not be playoff caliber, it's another reminder. You really can't overlook anyone. Well, yeah, we, uh, we talked about this before going into the All-Star break, saying that when they came out, everybody was talking about the the – lack of strength of schedule that the Grizzlies have. But I, to me, it was like those are the more dangerous schedules in a lot of ways, especially end of the season, because in your mind, you see what they've done for the entirety of the year. But in their mind, they're still trying to make an impression. And if they have an opportunity to have the door be open just a little bit, then that's, that's the opportunity that they're going to try to take. And we saw in the Orlando game, the Grizzlies didn't give that opportunity. But then against the Houston Rockets, they did. And then with, with Houston, they have, they have a number of guys – like Orlando, like a lot of these young teams, they have this talent there. They just haven't been able to put it together consistently to be able to win games. Um, but Houston, they got on a roll. And, and the Grizzlies, you could tell, they wanted to try to get it. Mm -hmm. But it's, in, in this game, we always say, I, I learned at a young age, my dad always tell me, don't mess with the game. And you mess with the game, it'll mess with you. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought that, that's, that a little bit of that crept in uh, with this team as to say, oh, we can turn it on. It's just, it just, it could not, the light couldn't turn on bright enough. Mm -hmm. You talk about turning it on and, you know, Coach Jenkins was, had a, was made a few words after that <laughs> loss against Houston Rockets and just, you know, kind of politely said that they kicked our butts. But a lot of it was a lot of the players were kind of like out of their rhythm and defensively not the same urgency that we're used to seeing from this Grizzlies group. And not that it's been a consistent pattern, but when you look back to Orlando Magic, especially in that first quarter, it took, it took a moment for the, the defense to kind of kick in and get those stops. What have you seen been, be, been the difference maker, especially in the last couple of games, about the defense? Well, I think even just since the All-Star break itself, mm -hmm. we, we've seen this team not have the offensive struggles. They've still been able to find the offense. But in some ways, just the, like you said, the consistency on the defensive side has become a little bit inconsistent. And, and that's one thing that they can't let slip, especially the defense out to the three-point line, because they're going to run into situations offensively where the games become a little bit more half-court oriented, so the scoring is, is going to become more at a premium. And so you have to rely on can you still get stops to then help your offense. And so um, they don't want to have the slippage and the, at this time, this, these are times where you want to continue to ramp yourself up to get ready for the playoffs. And so I, I think there's, there's more than enough time. There's, this is no uh, sound the alarm, are you worried? But it is something that says you have to acknowledge mm -hmm. 
that we're not playing at the same level on a consistent basis as we were going into the All-Star break. And if they can just get back to that mindset again, then I think everything else again will fall into place. The fast break opportunities, the highlight plays, uh, the energy plays, all of that was happens off of their defense. If you, even going back to your Orlando game, things changed in the second quarter. Why were they able to have the big second quarter? Because they only gave up 16 points. And so if you can continue to have that mindset, then I think this team will be all right. And they'll, they'll, it'll, they'll, they'll get it back. There's, there's always that moment of, mm -hmm. wow, are we really the second best team in the, in the NBA? And, like, like, and again real? this morning. Exactly. Wake up again. It's <laughs> right. like, oh, really? like you, you, you can feel yourself a little bit, but you don't want to, to lose sight of the objective, which is still to finish playing this regular season the best that you can. Yeah, it felt good to wake up. Grizzlies back in second in the West after the Warriors lost to the Nuggets last night. But you also have a team coming in tonight in the New Orleans Pelicans that, yes, is in that play-in tournament hunt, but playing much better than their record yes. suggests. Another one. They had won four in a row. They go into Denver, have that crazy Herculean effort from Jokic that led to a Nuggets overtime win over the Pelicans. But C.J. McCollum has infused life into yes. this team. What is it about the Pelicans that... I don't know what, what did he add to them that made it such a dramatic turnaround from where they started early on in the season. Well, well he gave them a true veteran presence on their team. I, I think that what, what they were missing was uh, not just a veteran voice, but also a guy that has been through it and can still get you somewhere on the floor. And I think that's what CJ he brings to them is a, a little bit of stability on the offensive end. We all know that Brandon Ingram is their most dynamic offensive player but their more efficient offensive player will be C.J. McCollum, and he draws the attention of defenders. Same way we talk about Desmond Bain. You just need guys that are going to force someone else to worry about them so that other guys can play well off of it. And, and, and we, you looked at New Orleans, you say, of course, with Zion being out the entire year, but if you look down their roster, you always said this was never a void of talent team. Willie Green's first year, he's trying to implement what he wants to get done, and now you're starting to see what, the, what they were putting in place from the beginning of the year starting to bear out, but they're also starting to be a lot healthier and the addition of C.J. McCollum. And so uh, I, I think the thing that makes them dangerous has always made them dangerous to, to, with us is the length at the wings. They still have that, that advantage on, at that position. They have the athleticism, and then they have a brute on the inside with Valanciunas to deal with Steven Adams. And so uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be another nice test. I, I thought that even though... The Grizzlies were going to be playing a bunch of sub-500 teams. They weren't teams that were that are built to be sub-500 teams. You know, like they're teams that things have just gone awry, whether it be injury, whether it be COVID, whether it be the synergy between the guys. But if you looked at these teams, you didn't look. The New York Knicks, the New Orleans Pelicans, the Indiana Pacers, bunch of games that are coming up for this Grizzlies team of teams that, yes, they're below 500, but their standards and how they play are really above 500 mentality. Mm -hmm. You hope the Grizzlies can get back to that Grizzly side of basketball that you mentioned uh, today when it starts with the Pelicans. And when you look at the defensive lulls that the Grizzlies have had, a lot of your mind and the, the broadcast, you guys keep showing Dylan Brooks sitting on the bench, you had a moment where you were talking and you said it was eight days. I don't know the exact amount of hours. I just wanted to know, because Dylan did say, were you in the meeting? If that, if that is correct, when did the eight days start counting? Because we do miss Dylan Brooks and the idea of getting him back sooner rather than later. We knew that Jenkins said that this week was the time where he was going to be going back to five on five practices and getting some more playing time in. You see him out there on the court during pregame against the Rockets. So when did the time start? And what do you think <laughs> that time frame looks like? Okay, so first off, the, okay. the time thing, it's almost like the whole PD <laughs> thing about the officials and I say they on time, show up on time thing. Mm -hmm. This was just, I was sitting there and I'm like, I'm, I'm not saying anything. And then I, I don't like to not say anything. I want to be a part of everything <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. And so at that moment, it's like, oh, I'm going to say something. But I'm going to say something outrageous so people don't believe that I really know. So I said the eight days, and that's like, well, 22 hours. So it's like, oh, okay, he's just talking. But then it was like, oh, well, how would you know it was eight? Yeah. How, <laughs> the, Dylan didn't help it at all by being like, oh, were you in the meeting? I, like it, So that just made it be like, well, why did you think eight? I, I have no idea when Dylan is coming back. None at all. But. If the eight days and 22 mm -hmm. hours stood true from that moment, okay. then to me, we will see him playing at Indiana yeah. is when we on the road, trip. On the road trip. Is that that would be. But that had nothing literally. And even when we did the math on that, I was like, I literally just came up. My birthday is on the 8th. 
I was like, oh, eight days. So I was like, oh, 22 hours. I'm number 22. Like, literally, that's how I came yeah. up with it. Wait, there say, was this. say the eighth is today your birthday? No, no, no. Oh. November. In oh, November. No, oh, no, no. Okay, I wasn't no. missing. Like, today, eight? No, no, no. Like, like, yeah, just like, just could y'all start to... singing or something? I, I thought I would have something. We all no. look at each other like, today's March 8th. No, no. Uh. So, that, so that is even how I came up with those numbers. But him then coming and being at, at that moment, that wasn't, we, we didn't. There was nothing wasn't that was, bit. wasn't, we didn't have this in the show. Okay. This was just him walking over and at the moment it just happened. And so I, 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 uh, I don't know when Dylan's coming back, but do we need Dylan? Yes. And I tell everybody, <laughs> if we are serious about winning a playoff series, it cannot happen without Dylan Brooks. Mm -hmm. If it is eight days, exactly. We know that that telepathic Canadian energy, you might have some Canadian inside of you somewhere at some point, because that would be insane if you just predicted it off the cuff like that. Hey, but I think all of us, yes. Real you know. quick, Brevin, five numbers, one to a hundred, please. Right oh, now. Yeah. What do you say? Five numbers, one to a hundred, right now. <laughs> Let's go. He's ready for his lottery Let's, ticket. <laughs> we got to keep talking about the other giving you five we're numbers. Gonna eight. We go 75, 75, eight, 22, and then we'll throw in a 48. And then we'll go with 97. And give me one and more for the Powerball number. Powerball is always going to be 25. Got you. Thank you. All right. Back Everyone's to Dylan. writing this down, CJ. You let everyone. Yeah, you need well, to. We, we all get a piece of the pie. Well, you seen that episode of Martin? <laughs> they, wow. they just split the check. Hey, so, you, so you're getting that large ticket for the whole Rise and Grind crew, the whole Rise and Grind family. That's what it means. We all over here. Yeah. So you go get it. How, okay. Hold on. So I wish, I wish the camera was on that face right there because how, that was not the yes face at all. That was how the, many people in the Rise and Grind family? <laughs> are, are we just doing? It's the, it's for the today. four of us here in Robbie. Yes. Five. Just, so just yeah, us. So we're not so late. Not in the family. See, that's that's that thing back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. See, we, we said the rise we said and grind. Right. Rise and grind on a Tuesday. Dude. Yes. There we go. Yes. There we go. We said that sign. Come on. Let's keep it with No, that. but yeah, no, it, I, I think he is he is very vital. And uh, and I say that just because you're going to need mm -hmm. his size, his strength, his abilities on the defensive side, but also offensively, a guy that doesn't mind taking a big shot. Because he doesn't mind if he makes or misses it. That's the confidence that he has. And then you just need someone else that can create his own shot. Because you, you get into the playoffs, you're going to need some creators on the offensive end. And, and Dylan is one of those guys that it may look awkward. It's not the norm. But he gets where he likes to go on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the confidence is there. And defensively, it speaks for itself. But yep. while he's been out... Jaron Jackson Jr. as the defensive anchor has been such a pivotal part of what this team does defensively. When you see a game like the one on Sunday against the Rockets where he gets into foul trouble, he only plays 13 minutes, which for a healthy Jaron, we don't see that often. Yes. And so the decision to keep him out the rest of the way. But how much did that show you, specifically in that matchup, just the necessity of Jaron Jackson Jr. to be in the game for this team at this point in the time? I, I think it showed that there is no player more important than Jaron on this team. And, and it's because, of, and you say that, and it's, it's not because of someone is better than the next person. Everybody wants to make it seem like, mm -hmm. oh, so he's better than, no, no. It's the talent of what he brings to the floor, no one else on our team can do. There's no one with the versatility, with the size, the strength, the athleticism, the speed, the ball handling, the three-point shooting that Jaron can put on the floor. And so without having him on the floor, there's a void with our team because it's another weapon that you can't use offensively. It's another person that on the defensive side, you can't have multiple defenses. He's not there to protect you at the rim. And so uh, his worth to this team is very high. And this, in, in, in order for them to continue to stay really good, you need your really good players to be on the floor, but they also have to play to their abilities. And so uh, it, it's, it's no secret. There's no, we, we all know that he is very vital and he needs to be on the floor. And, and they would like to get him back into that rhythm again of how he was playing before, whereas on the offensive end, mixing up what he does. Defensively, we've just seen a little bit of slippage in terms of the fouls and the type of fouls. It's not... I don't get caught up in the number so much with Jaron, but it's the type of fouls that he's that he picks up. And if we can keep him away from those type situations and on the floor and continue to keep him involved in the game, then then it's a it's an asset that that we'll need 
uh, as you continue to finish the regular season and into the playoffs. Yeah. And he'll have an interesting matchup tonight. And, you know, as Coach Jenkins did say that hopefully he can have a better game because the Rockets took him out of his rhythm. And as you mentioned, we know what Jaron Jackson Jr. can do. And it'd be great to get him kind of going again at, at home on our own court. Yep. And going up against a, a player that used to be here, I mean, Jonas Valanciunas. And when you see Steven Adams and JV out there at the same time, totally different. And I know we used to say JV was our, like, waking up, walking double-double. But when you see what Steven Adams has, like, come into, especially against the Rockets for his season-high night, getting a double-double that night, and then just, like, what he can do getting the rebounds. And you just got to love seeing that offensive rebound when he, like, swats it out back into the backcourt. <laughs> and there's always someone there to get it. And that's such a pivotal moment. But when you think about Steven Adams versus Yona Valanciunas down there in the paint, I mean, it just feels like it's going to be some pushing and some shoving going on. <laughs> but what do you hope to see tonight against those two? Uh, it's definitely gonna be some pushing and shoving <laughs> going on with those guys. Uh, I, it's, it is a it's a matchup for Steven that is is dual because yes, there'll be a physical matchup, mm -hmm. but JV also shoots the ball mm -hmm. out to the three point line, so he has to mix up. He can't just run back to the basket every time because you, you do have to get out on the floor. But you don't want to give up him being able to roll to the basket clean by being so far out on the floor. So uh, it, it'll it'll be interesting, I think. Steven does a good job of being able to use his assets on the other end against guys. And I think we've seen him be more athletic. I talk, He's looked more athletic as the season has gone along. And I, part of that is comfort, of course, but also he's rolling to the basket harder. And, and when he's catching the ball, he's looking to score. There, there are a number of times early in the season where he would roll, catch, and you'd be like, all right, shoot, but he would be looking to make the next play. Whereas now we're seeing him catch yeah and one opportunities and, and uh, I know the free throw percentage has come down but I still think he's confident when he goes to the free throw line and a lot of times when you lose the confidence that's when you are turning down shot opportunities because I don't want to get fouled and go to the line and so it shows me that because he still is attempting those shots and going that that his comfort with going to the free throw line is there so it, it'll, be, it'll be a fun battle a one in which uh, Steven has to stay out of foul trouble, so he stays on the floor and they can continue to match up. But I think his screen setting, his rolls to the basket uh, will be key tonight because JV, different than, than Steven, is not as good laterally as I think Steven is with his feet laterally. And so he'll be able to, Ja will be able to put pressure on JV and whether it ends in a drop-off finish, a lob finish, I think Steven will be important in that way. It's been fun to watch him put the ball on the floor, go up, get some dunks like it's just more levels of Steven Adams unlocked and I think it is the confidence like like you said even at the free throw line he misses a lot of free throws yes. but he still has the confidence <laughs> and, yeah and he know but he just is so comfortable in who he is and if JV rolled out of bed and got a double double like Steven Adams rolls out of bed already has 10 rebounds and has set like three monster gnarly screens that have helped the Grizzlies offense facilitate in the way that it's supposed to work so I think that's been really fun to watch for this team we will see how it all plays out tonight we won't see Brevin Knight which is a bummer <laughs> but we wanted to ask you uh, some other action around the NBA yep. last night the Lakers back to their losing ways in San Antonio. Greg Popovich now tied with Don Nelson for most wins for a coach of a single team. LeBron didn't play for the Lakers, but the storyline coming out of it is Russell Westbrook. And it started yesterday. His wife was on Twitter talking about some of the death threats that their family has received regarding the play of her husband. And then Russell Westbrook addressed those comments after the game. Take a listen to what he had to say. Um, Russ, just off the court, um, your your wife had a social media uh, thread today that I think gave some open kind of a window to some of the extreme things that have happened to your family this season. Um, people kind of talking. My career, you mean? Well, <laughs> it seemed like it was about this season, but I was wondering if there was anything you could speak to that. Yeah, you know, um, I think, you know, for one, you know, I 100% uh, stand behind my wife and how she's feeling because um, it's not just about this year. Um, right now, she's reached a point, um, and my family has reached a point to where it's really weighing on them. Um, and it's very unfortunate uh, just for me personally because um, this is just a game. This is just a game. This is not end all be all. And um, when it comes to basketball, I don't mind the criticism of missing and making shots, but the moment it becomes where you, sh you, you know, my name is getting shamed, um, it becomes a, a, a issue. Um, I've 
I've kind of let it go in the past, you know, just because it never really bothered me. But um, it really kind of hit me the other day. Honestly, I was, uh, me and my wife was at um teacher parent conference for my son. <clears throat> um, and the teacher told me, she's like, uh, Noah, he's so proud of his last name. He writes it everywhere. He writes it on everything. He, he tells everybody, he walks around and says, I'm Westbrook, Westbrook, that's his last name. And it kind of, I kind of sat there in shock and it hit me like, damn, like I can no longer allow people, um, you know, for example, West Brick to me is now shaming, like it's shaming my name, it's uh, my legacy for my kids. Um, it's a name that means more, not just to me, but to my wife, to my mom, my dad, uh, the ones um, that kind of paved the way for me. And, and that's just one example, I mean, that kind of hit myself and my wife in a, in a place where um, it's not great, man. And, and, you know, I think a lot of the, a lot of times, you know, I let it slide, but it's now time to put a stop to, to that and put it on notice. Like there's a difference and I, it, we need to make sure that it's understood. And every time I do hear it now, I will make sure that I address it and uh, make sure that I nip that in the butt. Was some of the most vocal we've heard Russell Westbrook when it comes to addressing the criticism that he's faced. We've seen it throughout the year and even seeing it in last night's game where someone did call him Westbrook and we should not call him Westbrook anymore if that's what he wishes to be the case. But just how complicated of a situation is it for a player who is on a team that's underperforming? He continues to have his shooting struggles the way it is. L.A. is not as tough a market as some, but still one of the brightest lights that's going to be on you in the sport. And then you have a player who's a human being behind it all. Well, at the end of the day, this, 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 uh, this, this basketball thing is still basketball. And the biggest thing that he said there was that it's, it's, this is the sport. And we, we, all of us that play the sport, understand that there's going to be things said to you at the game. There's going to be analysis of your game. There's going to be people that have opinions of your game. And none of us have a problem with it being about my game. When it becomes personal or when it starts to affect your family, um, that's when it changes. And that's when your mentality starts to change. And for me, they, they, you can always acknowledge that someone's not playing well. Uh, it doesn't have to go any further than that. And, and a lot of times I think fans feel as though you have the right to say whatever you want because you're a fan of a team. And I, I always say that, caution yourself as to how and what you say because would you say that to a person if he's standing right in front of you? Like we, Everybody gets really tough behind a computer screen, uh, from standing across the street, up in the stands. Um, and, and then you expect for the other person that you're saying it to to just take it because they're supposed to. Well, they're not supposed to. What they're supposed to do is go out and play hard on a nightly basis, do the best that they can to help their team win, not take stuff or criticism from you that goes beyond the game. And so for Russell Westbrook, I feel bad for him because it's not him that's just playing bad, it's the entire team. Um, and he has been put in a position where he was thought to be something, somewhat of the guy that could get them over the hump, and it didn't happen. But, I mean, you can go down the list uh, on that team of guys that aren't fulfilling what they need to fulfill for them to be good. And, and, it, and it goes from their front office to the coaching staff on down the list. And so I, I just, I would say, man, just, just keep the sport what it is. You want to talk about, yeah, you stink, you can't make a shot, whatever. But the, the death threats to his wife, anything that happens that then goes over, spills over to his family, um, to me, just it crosses the line and goes too far. And, and too many people feel as though they have the right to be able to do it. And, and you, you don't have the right. You have the right to cheer. You have the right to boo. You don't have the right, any other right that you, that, that you think you have that is something that's personal, you don't, you don't have that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep it out of the game. And um, like just respect to Nina Westbrook, his wife, for coming out and saying that. And then for Russell Westbrook to add on, add on those sentiments. And you hope that when he does travel the Lakers, a lot of it happens when he's on the road with, with some of you know, the opponent fans. And just, rem, just rem, be remi like mindful. Uh, it's just a basketball game. This is like not serious. Don't call people out of their name. Um, and he's asked you guys not to, and his family's asked like to please keep it separate. Well, that's right for me. With, with, with what we do, I I'm, I only talk basketball. Mm -hmm. Like if you listen to any of our telecasts, I'm not going to talk to about someone's family. I'm not going to talk nothing. I, I don't. I, a lot of people, honestly, I don't know their family 
much more than if you haven't brought them to me, if I don't see them on a regular basis. I'm not going to research that. I'm here to talk about basketball. I, I don't get caught up in what you're doing on social media or all of these other things. And, and, and for me, it's the best way because that's, that's all, that's what I want people to know. Until you are able to touch these guys or be in front of them every day, only thing you can do is admire them for the sport, admire them for the abilities that they have. I think that's across the board for anything in mm -hmm. entertainment, music. That's all we can do is acknowledge that they have a skill that is way beyond what you can do. And that be and that's it. And other than that, th to me, they're just they're just people. People with a skill that they can do something better than I can do. Mm. And that's it. Really well said. Very well said. One last thing, real quick yep. before we go, because okay. we have to get to another guest. Draymond Green is supposed to come back for the Warriors on the 14th. How big is that for the Golden State Warriors right <laughs> Much now? Much needed. You see, without the, without him, he he's their communicator. He's their voice. Uh, he's the heart and soul of their team. And, and no matter how many shots he's making and not making, he's their Tony Allen, is what I say. When Tony Allen doesn't play or was, isn't doing the things he does when he was playing, the team struggled, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. And that's what Draymond Green does for them. Mm, exciting real, to see. Brevin, real quick before we let Brevin go. Oh my the numbers <laughs> only go to 69. It's 1 to 69. You gave me 75 oh, and 97. Shoot. Let me get two more numbers up off you, bro. All right. I'm going to give you, let's go with... Uh, 18 okay and 30 got you thank you <laughs> cj we'll keep you posted on what we let, want let me know how, let me know yeah. how we do oh well we're, we're gonna know we're gonna know and we're all splitting it evenly four ways i think cj should get like a little i mean he's the one who wrote down the numbers and it's gonna go get the ticket mm -mm. So if he gets so it picked, it, it, I, I right. picked the, yeah so that's and, why i say split it and it's international ways women's day so like let's split not leave us out of the equation here <laughs> he would want that too Brett, no right? i would want it to be evenly yeah. split thank you if i win Good luck catching your boy. Come see me. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh. <laughs> Brevin, like always, we appreciate you having uh, you on the show today. You're not on the call today, but we can't wait to see you again and hear your voice again. No, I'll be ready. Friday night. Friday night against the Knicks. We'll be back. Yeah, so if you're watching can't the Grizzlies game, it is exclusively on TNT. So make sure you are tuned in and watching what the Grizzlies can do tonight against the New Orleans Pelicans. Still ahead, we're having uh, Jerry Palmer join us on the show. Jessica will have a conversation about brackets. That's CJ's favorite thing to talk about. We'll be right back. You know it! Ready on take one? Ready. Okay, this is a crucial moment of the audiobook, The Big Escape. Chapter 9. They had waited long enough when finally the clock struck midnight and... Wait, where are you going? Nope. When you need a taco, you need a taco. Try the beefy melting Viesta veggie burritos. Just $2 each, only a Taco Bell. And that's my time. I'm not the voiceover guy too, but... Oh, guess I'll breathe the legal copy. A participating Taco Bell source for a limited time only. Price and participation vary. Tax extra. Taco Bell vegetarian items allow for dairy and egg consumption. Preparation methods could lead to cross contact with me. Visit TacoBell.com for full details. Here are your three bacon on bacon quarter pound double cheeseburgers. Enjoy your Sonic! Dang, son! This bacon is just hanging out of this burger, dog. That nice, tangy, smoked sauce. The bacon on this burger is just asking me to eat it. You should oblige. Bring home the bacon with a Sonic Bacon on Bacon Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. Stacked with four slices of crispy bacon and covered in tangy smoked sauce. Try one half price in the app for a limited time only at Sonic. Exclusions apply. See app for details. Mobile ordering available at select locations. The Grizzlies and Orion Federal Credit Union have partnered to help lucky fans score home loan help and Grizzly swag when you enter to win. Prizes include two floor seat tickets to a Grizzlies game. Special autographed merch, Grizzly swag bags, and a special welcome committee greeting from Grizz and the Claw Crew. Visit grizzlies.com slash Orion Home Loan for official rules. No purchase necessary, equal housing lender. Need some barbecue nachos, brisket, ribs, maybe a cheese and sausage plate? The Rendezvous is now open for curbside and carryout. They also deliver through a few of the popular delivery apps. While not much changes in that alley basement, you will see a few small differences and additions. They are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. And for the first time ever, they have dessert, key lime pie tart, chocolate chest pie tarts, and so much more. Spend some time downtown and visit our friends at The Rendezvous, a family-owned restaurant in downtown Memphis Alley since 1948. If you've been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping, if so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. 
One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies at 901-276-6507. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K through 6th grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Next up, your Memphis Grizzlies take on the New Orleans Pelicans for Celebrate Her Story Night, presented by Nike. On tonight at 6.30 p.m., fans will want to arrive early as the first 5,000 will receive a Grizz Girls poster. Get Memphis and get your tickets today by calling 901-888-HOOP or going to grizzlies.com. And it is the most magical time of the year. It is March. It is conference tournament week, which will lead us in to the NCAA tournament. And here to help us celebrate, there's no one better than CBS's Jerry Palm. He is our special drop-in interview today. Jerry, thank you so much for joining us. I will dive right in because here in the city of Memphis, coming off of this weekend, the Tigers, they take down Houston. The celebration is on. The energy is all about this team getting back to the NCAA tournament. But you say they still have some work to do coming up in the AAC tournament this weekend. What do the Tigers need to do and why are they not yet quite a lock? Well, because of all the damage they did to their tournament resume before they got hot here at the end of the season. They've won, I think, 10 of 11. Uh, the only loss is SMU. And then they lost SMU right before getting hot. So, you know, there's still some work to be done. There's losses to East Carolina, Tulane. You know, some of these early season losses, they still count. They, the committee doesn't put any special weight on how you're playing now. But if Memphis wasn't playing this way now, we wouldn't be talking about them at all. So the conference tournament, they, have, they are bracketed so they could get another shot at SMU uh, and then another shot possibly at Houston, who's probably sick of losing to Memphis. So, you know, obviously if Memphis wins the conference tournament, they're in. If they can beat SMU and get to the final, they're probably in, although it depends on what some other teams do. Uh, and then, uh, you know, if they don't beat SMU, then I think you've got a nervous selection Sunday coming up because that's three losses to another team you're competing with for a spot in the bracket. Hey, Jerry, CJ Hurt here. We used to talk all the time on, on 56. Quick question. How strong is this year's bubble, right? And, and I ask that because I'm watching now a lot of these smaller conferences are having their conference championship games. How strong is the bubble and how many of those conference champions, if it's not their one seed, are going to end up multi-bid leagues when we think about smaller conferences? Well, one of those has already happened. I mean, the, the champion of that league won, so you avoided that particular problem with Murray State, who definitely would have been an at-large team had they lost their conference final. Probably the only conference left where that could be an issue is the Atlantic 10 with uh, Davidson, the top seed in that tournament, uh, might be an at-large team as well if they were to lose. And the A-10 might not get a second team in any other way other than somebody knocking out Davidson. Uh, VCU is a, a bubble team. They're among my uh, first four out. Uh, so it's possible that VCU could just play their way in without winning the conference tournament. Uh, but I think that more likely for the A-10 to get a second team, it means that somebody besides Davidson won the conference tournament. So that's probably the one conference where teams on the bubble have to be concerned. As Memphis moves forward, and they would like to have a less sweaty selection Sunday for sure, but if they do get to a place where they are making it into the NCAA tournament, where do you have them slated right now? What does that seating potentially look like? 
I think I've got them as a, an 11. Uh, they're either a 10 or an 11. They're right on that line. Uh, but the 11s uh, are teams that, you know, those are all bubble teams. Anybody who's an 11 could still play their way out. So that's where Memphis is. They're not They're not in the first four. Uh, they're above that. SMU is actually in the first four. So Memphis is a little above that, but they're not uh, they're not secure for any for any uh, any reason. And when it comes to Houston, which here in Memphis, all we've seen is that Memphis Tigers beat Houston by double digits two times. They continue to be up there in the top five of the net rankings and everything that they've done as a top 25 team this season. But with the eyeball test, it just doesn't seem like Houston as a team goes with Houston as a analytics numerical type of team. What do you think their trajectory is for the tournament this year? Well, if your eyeball test is just watching Memphis play them, then certainly, <laughs> you know. But but you're you're actually right though. The the net ranking for Houston does not match their resume at all. In fact, I've got a higher number next to them in the bracket than they have in the net rankings because I have them as a six. So the the thing about Houston is they only have one win over another team in the bracket, and that's their win over SMU, which they split home and home with. Uh, they only, their only quadrant one win is Oklahoma State, who's not eligible for the NCAA tournament, but would not be a tournament team even if they were. Uh, they've got a ton of quad two wins. That's the next level down. Uh, they don't have any bad losses or anything remotely considered a bad loss. Uh, even the losses to Memphis, even though they were double digits, Memphis is a good team. So, you know, Auburn, Michigan State, the SMU loss on the road. You know, these are not really bad losses, which is why they're as high in the bracket as they are. Uh, but not, this is not a number five team in the country by any reasonable measure, uh, unless you just don't care about anything except margin of victory. <laughs> it is crowded at the top when it comes to the actual five best teams and who you talk to might have a different opinion on, on what those five teams are. But you had Duke's loss to North Carolina over the weekend, which probably shifts them into that two seed line. Who are your four picks that will be the four one seeds when we're looking at it on Selection Sunday? Ooh, good question, because that means I have to predict all the conference tournament winners. Um, I, th I think Gonzaga is a one win or lose tonight. Uh, the overall number one, if they win. Auburn or Kentucky, if either of them wins the SEC championship, that team will be a one seed. Uh, Arizona is probably a one seed if they win the Pac-12. And then the Big 12 champion, if it's Baylor or Kansas, is also a, a one seed. But if Baylor and Kansas both lose, or Auburn and Kentucky both lose, or Arizona loses, then it opens the door maybe for someone else like Purdue, uh, but not Duke. I, I don't really see much of a case for Duke because Duke's losses are really bad and their league is really bad. So they haven't had a chance to build their, their tournament resume in conference this year. So they beat Kentucky and they beat Gonzaga. And those are great wins, but they only have four, I think, quad one wins or maybe five. And they've got more losses outside of quad one than the other seven teams on the one and two line combined. So it's, it's kind of hard to compete when you've got that many bad losses and the teams you're competing with don't have any. I got to ask because we are in Tennessee. I know Memphis fans don't want to acknowledge the other team playing <laughs> basketball in Tennessee. The Vols, I think that they are three seed on, on your line, if I'm not, not mistaken, in your latest uh, bracket update. They win the SEC. Can, can they, how high up can they move on, on the seat line? Can they get up to 2A1? Probably not, but I would think they'd be a two. I just think there's too much competition ahead of them uh, to be a one. But the thing that's holding Tennessee back in terms of getting higher in the bracket now is the fact that all of their good wins have come at home. Their best win away from home so far this year is North Carolina, and that's a borderline team. I mean, they'll probably be in, but that's that's a bottom half of the bracket team. So, you know, th so they've got a lot of good wins, nothing, no bad losses at all. All their losses are in quad one, so that's that's great. But their inability to, to beat the better teams away from home uh, is, is what's holding them back. Obviously, if they win the SEC tournament, they're fixing that problem. But if they go out early or to, you know, early relative, you know, like lose to a good team early, uh, and then, you know, they haven't really fixed that problem, and it's going to limit how high their seat can be. Is there a conference tournament that you're most looking forward to watching? I think the SEC. I think yeah. the, the SEC tournament is going to be – it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm a Big Ten guy, so always the Big Ten. But um, the SEC tournament, to me, is going to be uh, – it, there's a lot on the line for these teams, and the top six are really good and not that far apart from each other. Uh, and the Big 12 also is, could be highly competitive because there are no bad teams in that league. I mean, there are teams that you know suffered by virtue of the fact that the rest of the league was better, 
but Kansas State, Oklahoma, West Virginia, those aren't bad teams. They're good enough to beat somebody if they don't show up ready to play. Jerry, Big Ten guy, Purdue, right? Am I mistaken? Yes, Purdue. Okay. Right. How how the hell do you guys keep finding these bigs, man? Every year, <laughs> y'all got one of these studs coming through. Where, do y'all just make them in a factory? Where the hell are y'all getting yeah, these dudes actually, from? You know, we're a big-time ag school, so we just grow them out in one of the fields. <laughs> yeah. That's the secret. There you go. We solved the problem. We, 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 we got some extra good feed in Zach Eady. <laughs> It's been, that's another fun team to watch this year. Jerry, I know you love this time of year as much as we do. We so appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy schedule to join us. We are hoping that the Memphis Tigers take care of business in the AAC tournament and wishing you all the luck doing all the numbers and the quads and keeping track of everything so that we don't have to moving forward the rest of the way. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Have a good one. That was Jerry Palm, bracketologist for CBS, helping us get ready. Selection Sunday less than a week away, which is just insane. We will take a quick break here when we come back. We will have more off the grind news. It was a very busy sports day. Plus, still ahead, Mike Wallace will join us for a Mike Check Minute on a Grizzlies game day. We'll be back. All six live on one stage. New edition, the Culture Tour. The biggest concert of the decade. The Culture Tour with Charlie Wilson. And special guests, Jodeci. The Culture Tour, coming to a city near you. Visit bpctickets.com for more info. Brought to you by the Black Promoters Collective. Kanye versus Drake. Roser, I talked about it in Rise and Grind. I'm going to let you have this moment right now. Uh, Drake is lame. Um, he just is. Kanye West makes music that will live on forever. Drake does not. Join me, Megan Triplett, and John Roser every Monday as we discuss our favorite three topics and give you our stances from stories from the weekend that was. It's Three Point Stance weekly on GrindCityMedia.com and on YouTube. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. Once a week, get your basketball fix with Talkin' Grizz featuring me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, and media from around the NBA as we discuss draft topics, prospects, and more. Connect with Grind City Media on all their social channels, subscribe to Grind City Media YouTube, and follow Grind City Media on Twitter and Instagram to stay up to date with all things Grizzlies. We got picks coming up uh, here momentarily for this weekend's action in the National Football Picks. League. Picks. Yep. Uh, we got one other game to talk about. It's the Rams and the Bucks. Tommy Brady. How uh, long ago was it that the Bengals won a game in the playoffs? 31 years. 90, yeah. 91. Yeah. 31 years ago? 91. Tom Brady was 27 years old when that happened. <laughs> Get your sports betting picks and trends with Lang Whitaker and Rob Fisher, The Odds Couple, Fridays on GrindCityMedia.com and YouTube. Welcome back to the show. It's time to get to some off the grind news really quickly. And let's start in the NFL because that was the biggest thing that happened yesterday. Just on a random Monday as you're just sitting at home, you get that breaking news ESPN alert that Calvin Ridley has been suspended for the entire season for betting on games. And this adds on to what has already been like a confusing uh, year for Calvin Ridley. And, you know, the idea that Calvin Ridley was going to be the guy in with the Atlanta Falcons and kind of going off of how he ended the season last year with taking some time apart taking some time away from the game to due, to, due to some mental health um, things that he was going through. And then you hear that the NFL was investigating him. And during that time that he had taken a step away from the game of football, he had uh, betted on some games. Calvin Ridley did reveal that it was only $1,500, but for a parlay of games. But some of those game bets were on the Atlanta Falcons. And he's been suspended for the entire season. So 2022, it's... Um, we won't see Calvin Ridley on the field. I don't know if he tweeted his way out of having a chance for that 
full year suspension to be taken down at all because he was tweeting up a storm mm -hmm. yesterday, including admitting that it was $1,500. I don't have a gambling problem. Said that he couldn't even watch football at that point. And then concluded with just going to be more healthy when I come back. Um, he also said, I know I was wrong, but I'm getting one year. LOL. It's mm -hmm. so hard because the NFL has a partnership with a sports lot betting, with many. As we've seen that overtake sports in general. I was just having a conversation with my mom about this the other day, and it's so wild to have gone from a period where like sports betting was not legal, and now it's such a like integrated part of the game experience. Even in all, all of our broadcasts, we see it all the time. We can't bet on mm -hmm. NBA games as a part of our job, um, but the sports gambling space is just huge, and so to have players not be able to participate, especially a player who's not playing, and they did say that there was no like insider trading information going on between between them. I think this is just going to be like a really dicey road as we mm -hmm. continue forward. But for now, Calvin Ridley is like their guy to say, look, see, we don't condone this. Mm -hmm. Don't do this. You all go do You all spend all your money and make us more money. Yeah. But players, no, no, no. Yeah. It part, part of you is like, you know, for, for Calvin Ridley, I don't, Calvin knew what he was doing. He should have known what he was doing because like that's, that's a, that's a rule. That's been a rule. Every single player knows that every single coach knows that no matter what league you work in, you know, that if you're a part of that league, you cannot participate in sports betting for said league. So that part is the part, the confusing part, because I never, I would never want to give um, someone the power of giving me something like a suspension or having some type of, because I think the NFL, sometimes they make people examples and you gave them that right, that power over you to, to do something, um, to, be, to, to suspend you for a whole entire season. Now, do I think the suspension does not fit the crime? I do. I definitely don't think that it fits, because especially when you had, you know, all the, all the sports shows, um, yesterday, today, that you are comparing, you're, you're comparing other suspensions for what other people have done, whether that be um, you've been accused of, you know, I don't want to, but you know, we all know. You right? want me to an, say it? An assortment, an assortment sure, of things. Put it on right. CJ in the I'll corner. I'll say it. Go throw it over it. here. It's kind of, I, I get the argument when people are punching women in the face and getting two games before the video comes out and then you decide to act. I, I get the frustration. People would say, hey, he didn't hurt anybody. He didn't clobber a lady. He didn't sexually assault anybody. He didn't kill somebody while drinking and driving. And those people got for a child abuse. He didn't abuse a child. Mm -hmm. Those people got four, six, two games. Why is he getting a, a full year? But like the the integrity of the sport is is the most important thing about the sport. The second you lose that, people lose interest. They think your your product is yeah. staged. I would also like to ask. So cool, we got Calvin Ridley. Are we gonna do anything about Stephen Ross? Right, this dude is trying to pay you cheaply. I might add, but pay coaches to lose games. That's not good for gambling. Also, that calls into question the integrity of the sport. Is anything going to happen to the owner of an NFL franchise who actually has an ability to impact what happens on the football field? Unlike Calvin Ridley, who with no insider information and wasn't even playing, he was away from the team for months or weeks at least. Like y'all got him a year. What's going to happen to Ross? Probably nothing, and that's what's frustrating about the NFL. And I think Sarah Spain said it best on her show yesterday. She was like. Whenever you affect the bottom line of a league, that we and, and, you, and you can't be surprised at that. You can't be surprised that the NFL is doing this because if you look at the history of the NFL, whenever it seems like it's affecting the bottom line of the league or affecting the actual sport, the NFL goes a little bit harder. If what you're doing off the field, as horrible as it yeah. may be, as long as it's not affecting my game, I will take a, a lesser suspension on you because at the end of the day, what do owners and it seems as if what the NFL organization <laughs> cares about more is the actual game. And that is what they, they believe that Calvin Ridley is affecting the actual game because as CJ did mention, it's, you know, the integrity of the sport because you cannot, you cannot be a player betting on games because we know of what it could mean. However, if you look at the evidence, he wasn't playing. It'd be totally different if he was a member and actually out there on the field for the Falcons at the time. But I do think the NFL was probably a little upset. You, you put a spotlight on yourself because at the time, we were so confused on what was going on with Calvin Ridley in his life. You yes. know, when they, were going, when they were supposed to go to London, Calvin Ridley said he didn't want to travel. He needed to take, a, take care of some personal reasons. And we were like, okay, do that. Do what's best for you. But then, but then it was in November, I need to take a, take a step away from the, from, the, from the game of football. And if it's mental health, and we're like, get you some help, but then there's no, 
at the time, the reports were saying that Calvin Ridley, there was no other evidence of, sh of showing that. And they were, people were trying to be there for Calvin Ridley. And you're trying, to, you're trying to figure out what is he going through. And I do think at that time, what the NFL does is you're affecting the game. You're affecting the game because you're supposed to be, they had already they had already traded Julio Jones. You're supposed to be the guy for this Falcons organization and be, it's supposed to be the main weapon. And when you took a step away from the game, NFL, let's look into Calvin Ridley. That, that's when they started investigating what Calvin Ridley was doing. And that's how it all came up. Uh, during that time that you were away, you're making bets. It's like you're you're adding more attention to yourself. Yeah. Um, and Calvin really had to have known. You got to have the right people around you, where you definitely knew what you were doing. And I don't even though I don't fit it. I don't think it fits the crime of what he did for a whole entire season. I'm also like, okay, why would you put that much attention to yourself, and why would you do it? Yeah, because because it feels like he had to have known. For me, and this is sheer mm -hmm. reckless speculation it feels like calvin ridley is probably not the only person in the mm -hmm. nfl who is doing this by any means but now he's going to be used as the scapegoat in the situation and he no. was already out of the game and it it's just i feel bad for calvin ridley because like you said he was supposed to be the guy and he had not yet reached that like elite mm -hmm. elite wide receiver status but he had the potential to be there he was so good. I took him in fantasy football this year, and it was so frustrating because that was like supposed to be the, the wide receiver that you could count or one of the wide receivers that you could count on, uh, despite the fact that Matt Ryan was his quarterback. But now you have a situation of, will we see Calvin Ridley again? I know that you say, you know, a year, I'll come back more healthy. You just never know. Right. You never know how this goes. And the Falcons are now down to one wide receiver Russell on the Gage. roster. Just, just one. <laughs> Like, come on, Calvin. Be you got to be smarter than this. Yeah. Be better. I hope he's getting the help that he needs and figuring out kind of. But not a what, gambling problem, <laughs> right? He doesn't. I, I don't think he has a gambling problem. But it's I don't think I hundred like that's light money for him. Yeah, but, but I, that's people, like my twenty five dollars. People who blow fifteen hundred in college on college football weekends. I just that's but, but, it's, but you can't do it. At the end of the day, it's like no matter if I agree with the rule or right. not, you know you can't do it. Like you know, <laughs> I, I don't know all the fa all the facts, but I, what I do know is I can't do it. I can't do anything yeah. with the NBA. That's yep. what I do know. I stay clear, clear away from yep. it. Now, I do think it probably is going to be a conversation as sports betting and gambling is legal and, and how much money is coming into the various leagues because of it and how you are going to monitor it a little bit better because now it's like it is you can have it on your phone. You can get on, go online. It is it's so accessible that it's probably really hard to monitor everything. As you mentioned, it's probably not the only person. I think a lot of players and hopefully everyone's trying to like, oh, you got to be like super delete, careful. Delete, delete. Right. <laughs> you got to be super careful, but also you don't want to draw any more attention to yourself. But I do hope Calvin, Calvin really, whatever happens with this and whatever happens throughout throughout the year, because let's not forget that he did have to take a, take a step away from the game. He's getting the help and having the right people around you where you're trying to figure out what is the next step for us and how can we make sure we do see Calvin Ridley again. So make sure you are extremely healthy again and making sure you're not yeah. making these type of decisions. Ooh, it was just a crazy story to see. Real quick, before we take a quick break, uh, I turned on ESPN last night. Mm -hmm. Cleveland State lost. No! Yes! And I wore my Cleveland State shirt on Sunday. I walking. was devastated. And I had a whole conversation about Dennis Gates to my yeah. dad. I was so excited. But as we have to, we'll never, I'm not saying move on from Cleveland State. I mean, for goodness sake, we have a Viking bobblehead. Mm -hmm. But we need, a, we need a small team to cheer for. And I think we might have accidentally discovered it yesterday when we picked Chattanooga to beat Furman. We didn't pick Chattanooga. <laughs> Robbie picked Chat. And we got a it? buzzer beater from Gene Baptiste to end this game Four, between one, Chattanooga three, and Furman. Two, he makes one. this Shot. Yeah! That's crazy. This We're is March. Dancing, it's Team Tennessee. It works. I just yes. think it fits. It fits the aesthetic of the show that it we does. ride with Chattanooga a little bit oh, longer. Look at that fan. Devastation. That was that was an unbelievable shot. Double teamed is able to get that shot off one in time. And I mean, he definitely a good look, but you had hands in your face. And to see that go down, it's, it does feel as if like that moment right there is like the start of March Madness and what is to come, what very well is to come. And we could very well see it. It's always like those crazy moments where you're like, there's no way. Four seconds, there's no way. There, there's just no way. And then when it happens, you're like, wow, this is why you love the game of basketball. This is why you love this time of the year. Look at this women's game right here. Navy, 47, fading away. Fading it in. Fading it in from the corner. Let's get it! Oh, the agony yeah. of defeat! Navy basketball <laughs> plays in the Patriot League? <laughs> That's what I'm taking away from this one. Oh, oh man. They were 5-13? and 13? 
In okay, league play? Up, Ooh, upset. Bank is open. Let's Banks go. remain oh, open no matter what time in March, yeah. baby. Let's get it. And shout out to University of Memphis. They got their, their yes. win yesterday for the women. For yep. the women's team, they got their win yesterday. So shout out to them. So their, their journey continues on into the conference tournament. Beat East Carolina. They will continue to move on. We will take a quick break here. We have CJ's Corner ahead. And Mike Wallace will join us for today's Mike Check Minute when we come back. Don't miss a minute of Grizzlies basketball down the stretch with Bally Sports Southeast. Watch on UVerse channel 1727, DirecTV channel 649-2, and Xfinity channel 1251. Or stream it live on the Bally Sports app. And for real-time Grizzlies news and updates, follow at Grizz on Bally on Twitter. Bally Sports Southeast, home of your Memphis Grizzlies. Hungry as a bear? Grizzlies fans can score big by ordering their favorite combos. If you pick up the three Doritos Locos Taco Combo from your local Taco Bell through March 6th, you'll score a key tag good for a free Chalupa Supreme on future visits. What's better than a Grizzlies win? Free Chalupas at Taco Bell. Stop by today to get yours. Key tag available at participating Memphis area Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Free item valid per disclaimer on back of key tag. Here are your three bacon on bacon quarter pound double cheeseburgers. Enjoy your Sonic! Dang, son! This bacon is just hanging out of this burger, dog. That nice, tangy, smoked sauce. The bacon on this burger is just asking me to eat it. You should oblige. Bring home the bacon with a Sonic bacon on bacon quarter pound double cheeseburger. Stacked with four slices of crispy bacon and covered in tangy smoked sauce. Try one half price in the app for a limited time only at Sonic. Exclusions apply. See app for details. Mobile ordering available at select locations. I was sweating over here, Robbie. I wasn't sure I had done a corner, but I did. Let's get to it. Major League Baseball plans to cancel another week of regular season games if it can't agree to a new collective bargaining agreement with the MLB Players Association by tonight. The league suggested that Tuesday was the deadline for a 162-game season and for the players to receive full play and full service time. The union has held firm that 162 games of play and service time are central to any deal struck and it has threatened to withhold expanded playoffs without them. In a proposal on Monday, the league lessened the chase, the chasm on the combat, competitive balance tax. The primary issue dividing the parties, MLB's offer bumped the first CBT threshold from 220 million to 228 million, but that's still shy of the $238 million requested by the union and uh, the growth of the CBT proposal to $238 million in the fifth year of a potential deal remained one of the sticking points for players whose proposal seeks a $263 million first threshold in 2026. All right, Mike Wallace is here. So we'll get a mic check minute and then we'll do pop double tap and get out of here next on Rise and Grind. Hey, low carbers, looking for a low carb, all natural, gluten free, healthy snack for on the go? Pork King Good Pork Rinds are gluten free chicharrones snacks that are all natural, paleo friendly, with clean labels and no artificial ingredients, flavors, or colors. Pork King Good Pork Rinds are incredibly light, fluffy, and healthy, and make the best keto snacks for game day. Visit your Super Low Foods store today and try all eight of our flavors. Super Low Foods is a proud partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Socios is the first of its kind in fan influence and rewards. Through the Socios app, you can influence the team you love, connect with other fans, trade, and compete for rewards. Socios.com is the official crypto wallet and trading exchange for some of the biggest sports teams and franchises in the world, like FC Barcelona, Juventus, the UFC, and now they are an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. Download the Socios app wherever you download your apps, create an account, participate, and win. Memphis fans can now enhance each moment of their day with the refreshingly luxurious taste of Cintron sparkling flavored energy beverages served exclusively at FedEx Forum. Cintron World is a lifestyle beverage brand inspiring everyone to create their lives with intention, energy, and style. As the official partner of the Grizzlies, Cintron is offering a 10% discount on your next online order when you use promo code GRIZZLIES10 at CintronWorld.com. And follow the lifestyle on social at Cintron World. Drink it, live it. Welcome back to Rise 
and grind. It is a Grizzlies home game, which means it is time for us to check in with Mike Wallace with his Mike Check Minute. Mike? Mike Check Minute time. The list of things we know about the Memphis Grizzlies as we head into the stretch run is far greater than the list of things we have yet to see or don't know about them. Do we know that they're a legitimate Western Conference title contender? The answer, Jessica, is yes. Is John ja Morant firmly in a discussion for MVP with the Grizzlies now second overall in the West and competing for that second spot? Megan, yes. Jaron Jackson Jr. should be in the Defensive Player of the Year discussion. Taylor Jenkins is definitely in the Coach of the Year discussion. And even Zach Kleiman, without having made a midseason trade, despite everything else that's gone on this year, he's positioned this team to be where they are. It's the biggest jump any team has made from last year to this year. He should be in the discussion for Executive of the Year. What we don't know, the Grizzlies are going into the final month of the regular season. Will the experience factor kick in? Will Dylan Brooks come in and be that perimeter primary defender that this team needs, especially against teams like tonight? Yes, it's the New Orleans Pelicans, but a guy like Brandon Ingram has given the Grizzlies problems time in and time out. We saw it with Jason Tatum. We've seen it throughout the season. So Dylan Brooks is on the runway to come back. That's one of the only questions that's left ahead of this team right now going into the stretch run. We'll see how it works out, but that's your mic check minute. Beautiful Mike Check Minute for a Grizzlies game day tonight. Grizzlies taking on the New Orleans Pelicans. And Mike, as you went, you know, up and down of what these guys the have done. Yes. The checklist. It's, it's the great. Mike Check it's, checklist. It's long, too, which is, which is a good feeling to have a long Mike Check checklist like yeah. that. But it starts tonight, as you definitely did mention, as New Orleans Pelicans. When you look up and down at the various stats and um, what the Pelicans do bring and what they, when you look at the matchup, what stands out to you the most that's going to be key? They have a closer. And like I said, when you look at Brandon Ingram and when you look at what he's traditionally been able to do against the Grizzlies, a 6'8", six, 6'9", six, long guy that can handle the ball out on the top, look over the defense, create a mismatch to get into the lane. Plus, he has the stroke to knock it down. He's a perfect clone of Jason Tatum. And we saw that last week, what Tatum did in the closing stretches against the Memphis Grizzlies. And we saw a little bit of that with, uh, you know, Porter and, and Jalen Green. Um, not Jalen Green. Uh, is it Jalen Green? Which yeah, one is with the Houston? Jalen Green. Jalen Green. Jr. I get my Jalen's confused, right? <laughs> Brown, Green, whatever. But those are the kind of players that have given the Grizzlies problems, especially when, you know, Jaron Jackson isn't there as a backline defender. He has to stay out of foul trouble. Um, Steven Adams needs to dominate the boards and offset Jonas Valanciunas the way they did in the last game. And then we'll see where it goes. This is a, on paper, you would think the Grizzlies can make this matchup win, you know, and get a win out of this one. But we just know New Orleans, it's something about New Orleans that gets under the Grizzlies' skin. And we'll see if the Grizzlies can get back on track after, you know, what happened the other night in Houston. Something about New Orleans and something about nationally televised games, yeah. too. That last one against the Celtics on TNT took a bit of a tumble after all the momentum leading into it was the conversation surrounding the Grizzlies coming off Jaws 52 point night. Right. Is this, what do you make of that with the Grizzlies? Is it, is it an overabundance of hype that then just kind of falls short or is it just coincidental that it's been the case where they've kind of fallen flat on national television? I, I think the Houston uh, blunder was just that. I think it was a hiccup. I mean, it was the second night of a back to back. The Grizzlies were at home and then had to travel. Not a long flight at all, but you're still dealing with the second youngest team in the league. Um, they still have some areas where they, they need to grow. And, you know, taking some teams for granted, that happens. You know, you think, okay, all of a sudden we're second in the West or fighting for second in the West. We should just roll into this city and just beat this team. Well, the Chicago Bulls could do that when Jordan was there. You know, they could just play a C effort game and roll in and overwhelm another team uh, just with talent. But this team isn't quite there yet, especially when you get against a team like Houston that's young and hungry and don't really know any better. So a team like New Orleans, now you're seeing desperation. New Orleans is desperate because they're in that play-in mix. Uh, on Friday, the New York Knicks are going to be desperate. Thibodeau, in some circles, uh, is believed to be fighting for his job. They're trying to make the play-in as well in the East. And then when you move forward from that, you have a four-game uh, road trip where you can get a lot of herky-jerky type matchups. Indiana, Oklahoma City, those teams can definitely jump up and bite you. Atlanta is a team that's fighting for his playoff position. And then you go back to Houston, a team that just beat you the other night. So this is kind of an unorthodox trip and an unorthodox stretch for the Grizzlies. They got to show some maturity, some professionalism throughout these next six games. Mm -hmm. It starts tonight on TNT. We just yes. found out today from because Brevin was here. Found out today mm -hmm. that it's not on Valley Sports uh, Southeast tonight. It's exclusively okay. on TNT. So another uh, national televised game that you have to watch on uh, TV tonight. And yeah. as you mentioned, that hopefully the Grizzlies can kind of like get back into their groove and get the national attention because all eyes are going to be on this game. Yeah. And it feels good. We know what we know what this team can do. And it's good to have a national televised game at home on a night like tonight. Especially, yes. it's a big night for the Grizzlies. It's today's international. 
Women's Day. We're doing a whole, a whole lot before the game. Um, and I put you on blast because you work with some amazing women in your life. I mean, like, I don't even, I don't think you realize that, but you work with phenomenal women. You have phenomenal women in your life as well. Yes, what makes yes. International Women's Day so special? And like, what, and how are you going to celebrate us today? Well, yeah, num I well number one, back. number one, number one, uh, my mother, you know, the, the, the greatest influence of my life for giving birth to me. Uh, just left town yesterday. So I was able to spend the weekend with her uh, coming down to Memphis and, and being around her. She kind of gave me a little early birthday surprise visit. Um, and my daughters, like I'm surrounded, my, my mother and my daughters are, are everything to me. So I'm around women every day. Um, I try to be the best man that I could be as a father, as a son, as a mentor, as a friend, uh, just because I want to help. I want them to empower me so I can empower them. And uh, that's, that's beautiful. And my smallest little one, my little princess, man, Kelly is a uh, Girl Scout, Girl Scout cookie seller extraordinaire, even though there's a national Girl Scout cookie shortage. So don't blame Kelly on that. But you two right here. I'm in a box right now with this glass right here. But, you know, you two are phenomenal in terms of what you do day in and day out. I've seen y'all growth ever since y'all came in here. And uh, Grind City Media is what it is because of the colleagues that I have and the queens that I'm sitting between of right now in terms of you two. So I'm going to celebrate you all by showing up. You and doing my gift? thing and working and and uh and, and trying to allowing y'all to bring not, the best out of me. He's not showing up for the radio broadcast tonight. So. Oh, ah, ah, I thought my presence, C, C, CJ. It was a one hit. I thought, it was a one I thought, hit I, CJ. I thought our presence, our presence every day is a gift. CJ hasn't told us Happy International Women's Day either today. No, Happy not International once. Women's Day. Thank you. There you go. There you Thank go. Thank you. There you we go. Will hear it. Hey, lunch Throughout is still on me at some point, man. We can get together. We still, we still gotta, you know, get together and have that lunch. So lunch is we on. We got a meeting to discuss that. On us. Let's, let's, yeah, we yeah. can yeah. talk about All lunch. Right. Yeah. We talk about lunch, okay? Yeah. Yeah. While yeah. you were gone over like the Super Bowl. Yeah, we kept having to reschedule because we... international woman right here was never in the international spot where she needed to be so we could celebrate. <laughs> I'm here today. There's no, yeah, there's, and there's no lunch. And there's no, no lunch. lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got. We gonna knock it out for sure. Well, we appreciate you, Mike. Right. As always, Grizzlies Pelicans tonight at FedEx Forum, six thirty tip on exclusively TNT, or you can listen on ninety two nine ESPN. We'll take a quick break, come back, hit pop in the morning, and get into this Grizzlies game day. Grizz fans, the official Grizzlies mobile app is your key to the game. It's an all-in-one experience updated with even more functionality. You can keep track of a team with news, social media, the schedule, stats, and the standings. And you can log into Grind City Media to watch and listen live to streaming content like The Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can check out Grind City Media articles, videos, podcasts, and GCM talent. See what's going on right here at FedEx Forum with our concert and event calendar. Plus, you can find detailed information on seating and concessions with Arena Maps. You can take the app into FedEx Forum as your mobile wallet, use it as your ticket to the game for Grizz Den Mobile Pickup, and as contact-free payment for Arena Concessions. The official Grizzlies mobile app, your key to the game. Welcome back. It's now time to get to a pop of the morning. And this is like a pop of the morning sports collab together because we have news about Aaron Rodgers. And it's not news about where he's going to be playing next year. That's supposed to be happening hopefully within the week that we get that decision. But well, for all we do know, he he was with over the weekend. He was seen with Shanley Woodley at his what? teammate. Yeah. I can't who, you say former teammate or teammate because I mean David does Currently. play for current teammate, I guess he's yeah. still on the Miami Packers. Okay. <laughs> at his wedding. Um, if you look in the background, you see Aaron Rodgers. He has the slick back hair, and there is Shailene Woodley. Had her hair in her voluminous curls. He also officiated the wedding as well. So you know, um, she she was like a wedding date, 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 date. It wasn't just like just come with me. It's like I'm officiating the wedding. Um, come be with me. And this is a sighting like no other. So when you figure out if they're together, if they're not together, we know they're not engaged anymore. But we said when that Instagram post came out, it felt as if. They're still trying to work through some things and figure some things out. So when you said this yesterday, mm -hmm. <laughs> at first, I was like, why is Megan sending a video of the Iron Lotus? Like, what is this random Blades of Glory <laughs> reference going on? Because I didn't see the article above it. And I yeah. spent the longest time watching that video and trying to decipher who Who's the, the Instagram. No, who the, like, Instagram oh, name came was, from. Yeah. I, was, I don't even recognize that name. Like, what is... 
then I understood. And then you so nicely I had circled Shailene Woodley in the background. <laughs> uh, this is interesting. I think they're friends. I don't know. I, I am, friends are like f- like friends, and we're, we're still trying to figure out what where we're gonna go. I have theories, but I think mostly it's just a friendly situation right now. I just don't see them as a couple at this point. I don't know. They're both a little like off the beaten path. So that's I think why that's it's, yeah, it's a whole how, situation. I really do believe it's just like we've all gone through it. You break up with someone, you figure it out, but you still there's still love there, and you're still like I still love yeah. you. Can we get on the same? road together like we went different paths at one point it's the off season and off season usually you start missing people you start realizing i have some time off like can we figure it out can we get back into what we used to be we have a wedding to go to like well i think do you think that was pre-planned like were they supposed to have gone to that wedding together probably pre-planned but honestly but think about it they're in the public they're they're in the public setting yeah if just because it's it's not like us like you pre-plan something actually i've been there you pre-plan something and it didn't work out i'm not bringing that person with me because that's even more awkward where you're sitting there you have these these like coupley moments and then you, because you were also part of the wedding you probably had different events you would just go by yourself and i do think that this was a couple ish thing because miles teller and his wife were there and we already know that, that whole miles teller circle. and they all went to hawaii they've gone they've gone on like hiking trips together they're great friends so it seems as if they really combined friend group so it wasn't just like you know shailene whitley is in the group because this is a teammate with the Packers, Miles Teller, how did he become friends? Like they've all they've all been hanging out. I really do think that I think they were part of the same derby group. I think this teammate was in their was part derby of it, group but too. That's how you combine. Like yeah, you could combine combining friend groups. Like yeah. the, Miles Teller wouldn't be it's all of a connected. sudden just hanging out with Green Bay Packers fans. He was connected. friends with he was friends with Aaron Rodgers. Their wife, all their wives and girlfriends are friends. So here they are going coming together. If it was publicly announced that you ended your engagement and these are also public people, you wouldn't bring her because that's even more awkward. Now you're showing casing. And you would make sure they're not in several pictures. I know it's in the background, but you would probably make sure that, like, I mean, yeah. you have to scan through and make sure they're they're together. I think they're still working some things out. I'm, I'm to be decided. But in the meantime, we it's still get to talk area. about these. We two all, we've all the gray area relationships. Like it's the gray area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And some and who knows how the wedding made weddings can make people feel some weird. Trust way. Me. I've seen that. And you I think yeah. that you yeah. start you look to your left and right and you're like. Maybe he's the one. I mean, he's he's getting off my friends and my family and like this Fun and that. Maybe feel like, you know, maybe we could get married. This could be it. And you start to know. really go down. And then you realize when you get home and there's no wedding around, there's like, you ain't it. And he's How still the same that? guy, right. not dressed up in a nice little suit or tux or whatever Been it was. Done that. Mm-hmm. Yep, it happens. We will continue to follow the saga of where Aaron Rodgers is playing next year. Is he or is he not with Shailene Woodley? Something else that we're going to see later on this month, Pamela Anderson. We talked about her last week and the news that she will be working with Netflix to do her own documentary telling her own version of the story. Not her own version of the story. Mm-hmm. Her story, as opposed to seeing the Hulu show with Pam and Tommy. But now we've also learned that Pamela Anderson will be making her Broadway debut in Chicago in a limited engagement later on this month i have thoughts <laughs> but i just i don't love the celebrity shifting into a role in chicago constantly she's gonna play roxy hart which if you saw the movie it's the character renee zellweger played and we've seen so many people sit in this spot like mm-hmm. mel b has been in it christy brinkley has been in it there's just been an assortment erica of girardi. erica girardi that see and erica girardi really took it a step like mm-hmm. even further in that direction because they always chicago is one of if not at this point the longest running show on broadway in a way that they've stayed relevant which is great i think it's awesome to like try to find different mm-hmm. ways to bring people in off the streets who might not want to go see a musical but they see a celebrity that they're interested in seeing and certainly pamela anderson fits that bill i would be intrigued to see her there um i'm just sick of chicago that's what it really yeah. comes down okay. to i think it would be a hot ticket i think it comes at a um pr wise it comes at a really really great time coming off of everything that's that, that's happened with the hulu show and her coming out and making the announcement that she's gonna be doing a documentary with netflix to have her side of things we haven't seen pamela anderson really active in the entertainment world in a couple of years and besides the wedding that she got married during the, during, during the pandemic and now yeah. she's already divorced again um but that like that's it she's like already gone through and like you know taken everything off of her instagram so i do think this is probably her introduction and back into like i want to get back out there and i want to have my voice and so i think i think it could kick a go well there are a lot of celebrities who surprise you so that's what i'm always looking for like can she surprise us all and kind of see where she takes off with it and it is like a blonde bomb shelly type role i don't know her singing voice but like you know yeah. what I'm talking about. 
with Erica Girardi high. You don't have to have like she's a very, she's a good, very good strong, singer. Yeah, yeah she's, a, she's a she's a singer she, in real life. Really? Yeah. Her 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 er, Erica Jane <laughs> is her uh, name. She's really yeah. she's really popular in the like electronic co like the boom boom that, that type of world. She's very <laughs> famous. I don't know what it's called. She's very famous though. Like EDM yeah. world. Yeah. Her name her name is Erica Jane in that world. I'll play you some songs, but she actually is okay. a decent Real House of the Beverly Hills. When she was getting gearing up for that part, yeah, she she um, did a lot of vocal lessons that they, that they did show. But she's known for her singing, her more of her singing entertainment world because she does those, she does those extravagant dance moves like you know, body suits, half naked. She is all the way there. You know, I am just now thinking. I'm having a, a change in uh -huh. thought in this moment because on the Pam and Tommy show the not reality show but the little james version on hulu there is a scene where they talk about pamela anderson's like love for musicals growing mm -hmm. up and that was one of her favorite things to watch and she, her favorite was the king and i and they do this whole like song and dance number where she's singing along to one of the songs from the king and i so maybe this has been like an always childhood dream mm -hmm. and anytime someone can fulfill a childhood dream especially when it comes to like I don't know, setting goals for yourself yeah. and at this part in your life, maybe you thought it was never going to happen and now you have the chance to do it. Mm -hmm. Go for it. We'll I like see. it. I'm in. Yeah, we'll definitely see. All right, let's do some uh, double tap or not before we get out of here. And it's a Kim Kardashian video because we talked about it yesterday, her outfit at Paris uh, Fashion Week at the Balenciaga show, the caution tape. This video went viral yesterday because posting of how she was able to walk or I guess I not can't. really walk. This is her walking <laughs> to the show and <laughs> I cannot. I don't know why we all were worried about how did she use the restroom, but I didn't really think about what was the walk. And I don't know why someone would post this. If I, if you're part of my PRs, I please do not get this out here because <laughs> she looks like what? Show it again, Robbie. I can't. I watch this over and over again, and the tweets <laughs> are hilarious. Under she, it. she looks like a geriatric mummy, right? That just woke up. She's yep. walking so gingerly, so slow. There's no <laughs> movement above her knee <laughs> like that she is scooting here this is hilarious i need a video of how they took this off, off because yes. i know she had the bodysuit under it but when you see her walk it's kind of like and because it's taped up to her her shoes like i'm guessing you had to take scissors and just say like scrap the bodysuit and just say but then you're so close to your skin that I would just be she, so nervous. She took a deep breath. What do you mean? That thing is about to rip. And she did I'm this like, motion and it just rips off. I think it's too tight to, I honestly think it's like too tight to rip. But I'm just, I know everyone always makes this comment on an outfit like that. But what if you have to go to the bathroom? I don't think she used What it. if it comes I, quickly? Sometimes you just don't know. What. I think, here's, the, here's why I know. I think Kim has trained for this. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, for, I'm for real. Kim has trained for this. She's a pro at this. She's talked about it before. When she wore the wet look at, Met, yeah. at the Met Gala on the show, she was like, "What if I have to use the restroom?" She was like, "All the whole entire time, I had to use the restroom, and I was just strong. I was just very strong." And then her, on her skims, we've line, all been strong, but there comes a time <laughs> when she made skims. The reason why she made skims, a lot of it was because when she made the, the various different like the sides snaps. of the legs and the snaps, she said she put. She's the one that put the the snaps in the hole at the bottom of her, you know, of her skims line because she always said, and when you have to use the restroom, sometimes uh. you can't get things off you have that hole there so she is she has trained for this moment i think her body is just probably very strong and she's been mentally strong she's she's able to do it Depends. anything on passion. international women's day yes <laughs> she's mentally strong enough to wear that outfit yes. i just i could watch that video of her walking like that we've we haven't all been there, no. but we've all been in an outfit where you just can't walk, very, whether it be the shoes or the dress or the skirt or a pair of pants or whatever, where you just don't walk the way that you normally walk. And it That's just was like a, a little level. too aggressive. That takes it to the next <laughs> level yeah <laughs> that is definitely going that's i that, that's been passed around so many times it already has like over like i think i think it was last night yesterday was over 10 million views on the video so um i appreciate the humility of it though because like she's not a she didn't i'm post sure it, i know she didn't want it but when you put that on you have to know like that's i don't think she knew she was gonna walk like walk. that though i, I think you, you can tell with her face like you tell with the sunglasses you just like smile through it but it's like this is going to be a video that's definitely gonna that's be people okay. are gonna make fun of me over that's insane yeah. Oh, all right. Let's hustle up and get into this Grizzlies game day. What we're watching tonight, Grizzlies Pelicans, duh, 630 on TNT. I'm sure there is some other conference championship action oh. throughout the evening, like Jacksonville 
Bellerman. I never said that school's name in Bellarmine. my life, but I'm watching. Bellarmine. I don't know how you say it. When they win, we'll find out because they are favored. Jacksonville is the one seed, though. But okay. it's all about who wins in the Jacksonville Bellarmine. I, I guess it's Bellarmine. I don't know. Bellarmine. It's Bellarmine. Okay, cool. Where is Bellarmine? Do we know? Louisville. In Louisville. Oh, Robbie's talking to me. Oh, that's what oh. it is. So even if Bellamy wins, they can't go to the tournament because they're transitioning to D1. So I guess we gotta Jacksonville get is in. A, a, a we got to get a mic. <laughs> at, least, at the very least, like a, a God voice yes. mic where it just comes on into the studio and yes. people can hear what he has Working to say. On it. That's going to be on our list of things to do on this, on this International Women's Day. We're going <laughs> to put the day suggestions to out there <laughs> to see what happens. Box. That uh, Warriors Clippers game is interesting too because we'll mm -hmm. see how things fall at the end of the night. Grizzlies currently in second in the West. Happy International Women's Day to all the women out there, and we appreciate everyone who watches us every morning on Rise and Grind. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. This has been Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Tune in live daily at 8 a.m. or on demand by heading to GrindCityMedia.com or Grind City Media on YouTube.